Today we are doing a tutorial on how to program drums. Now, warning, if you are a veteran at all of this stuff already, this video is not for you. This is just like you've got Logic Pro X or Reaper or something like that, maybe a few weeks ago or a few months ago, you're totally new to this and you want some help getting started programming your first drum tracks. Now, while I am using Logic Pro X in this tutorial, this is applicable to most DAWs. Sure, there will be some different words or maybe one button that's different to do a certain thing, but generally the idea remains the same. In this tutorial, I will be using Mjolnir Drums by Solemn Tones because obviously this is the Solemn Tones channel, but most of the ideas here are the same across many drum samplers as well. So for Logic Pro X and and many other DAWs, the first thing you want to be doing is create a software instrument or a virtual instrument track. Because I've seen many people have this issue when they're starting out, they make an audio track, click on create, and then they try to load the plugin inside this list, the kind of effects list, let's say. That's not where you find this, because a regular audio track wants actual WAV audio or MP3 audio or whatever. And so these effects are used to alter audio that's already there. Whereas we want a software instrument track that actually creates new audio altogether. So we click on software instrument, create, and that is the audio we will actually be using. So then instead of using this, the effects again, we actually need to load it from the input and that's right above here. By default on Logic Pro X, it will say something like E-Piano or EX24 or something like that. Drop down, AU Instruments, Solemn Tones and then Mjolnir Drums. So what this will do is, you will be writing MIDI, which is node information and that will be fed to this input right here, which will then create, let's say your drum track from that audio information. So the next thing we want to be doing now that we have the drum program loaded is creating a MIDI track. So we use the pencil tool and we draw something. And just like that, we have some MIDI. Now, of course, this doesn't have a single note in here yet. So if you were to press play right now, you wouldn't hear a thing. So then by double clicking on this MIDI, you open Piano Roll. Now for Reaper or stuff like that, this may be different, but generally you want to get to Piano Roll where you can actually write new notes. So then we take the pencil tool and this is where we will be drawing out our notes. Now, if you want, let's say, a demo of what the kick sounds like in Milner Drums, you just click on the kick or you click on the snare and boom, you have like a little demo of what it sounds like. So next up, you want to be writing notes here, which will correlate to the different pieces of the kit. So for example, C1 in Logic Pro is the kick. So when we have the pencil tool and we click here, we just created a kick. You can change the length of the note, which doesn't really matter with a kick because the tail isn't that long. And let's say we want to copy paste that four times. Now we have one measure of four kicks. And so if we were to loop that one measure of four kicks, it would sound like this. Now that we know C1 is a kick, we want to maybe add a snare because just four kicks is going to get very boring very quickly. D1 is the snare. So let's take the second note and put it in the snare note right here. So now we have kick, snare, kick, snare, and it would sound like this. As you can see, whenever the note plays, the little kit piece will also light up showing you what's actually happening if a real player would be playing. Now, obviously most drum loops or your drum tracks won't just be kick, snare, kick, snare. We may also want a cymbal or something. So let's put in some cymbals. One very handy way to try out various sounds is by just taking the note and swooping it across the spectrum here of all the notes. So you can be like, oh, okay, that sounds like that. Maybe I want that sound right here. So I'll show you right now. I will just go across all the notes and you will hear different kit pieces being played. So let's say I want that as a symbol right here. By swooping across, I found that I wanted this. So let's say with this one, we do need a kick back. So we have our kick right here. I copy pasted that over. Uh, let's say that here we want a different symbol. Now, 
Do keep in mind, I'm not trying to make a uh, great masterpiece right here. I'm just trying to show you the bare basics of how to program a piece of drums. This is by no means going to make you an expert at making the sickest drum tracks right now, but it should get you started to start experimenting on your own. So this would be a start. Now, of course, this is not great just yet. So next up, I don't really like the way we've made these symbol symbols right here. Let's spice things up. So instead of going kick, snare, kick, snare, we could maybe do something like kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. So this is a bit more interesting. As you can see, when you play the kick, two different cymbals are being played at the same time. Then you hit a snare and another cymbal is being played, but not a third one because this one is still ringing out from the first time you played. And then you have the same when you hit a double kick and so forth. Now, if you were to just start looping this, okay, that's a start. But no real drummer likes to just sit there throughout the whole song playing the exact same beat. So what we want to be doing then is creating some, let's say, a drum roll. So we copy paste that and let's say that at the end of the fourth measure, we do some kind of easy roll to show, hey, we're going to the next part of the song. So we get rid of all this and we add a drum roll. Now the most basic ass drum roll you can imagine is the snare roll. And so what I did is we have at the end of this fourth measure, snare, snare, and then four snares. So let's see what that sounds like. So this is the most basic thing you can possibly create. Now, one thing you notice is all the notes here are blood red. In Logic Pro and many other DAWs, this would mean that your velocities are very, very high. If you don't know what velocity is, basically every single note you program inside a DAW not only has the information of which note you're playing, it also has other kinds of information. One of those pieces of information is velocity, which basically tells you how hard the note would be played. So, 127 is the maximum here, meaning you are telling the drum program, hey, play all of these notes at the maximum velocity, the maximum strength of, well, what that drummer could handle. The problem is no drummer on this planet, even if they're the most perfect, best drummer in the world, can ever play all these notes at max velocity every single time because we're not computers. No drummer can hit the same way every single time. Now, to combat this, most drum plugins have a solution called round robin, which means even though you may hit a snare multiple times after each other, they will still be playing a different sample. When you play a snare on Milner drums and then you play it again, no two snares after each other will be alike to make sure it sounds more human. However, they are still recorded very loudly at least at the maximum velocity. So what you want to be doing is randomizing velocity. This means that none of your notes will be the exact same velocity 24 seven, because right now you're literally telling the program, hey, play every single hit equally hard, which no human can do. And so if you tell a computer to do that, of course it will sound less real. This is also why many people think, oh, drum samples don't sound real, this kind of synth doesn't sound real, because they're often not even humanizing velocities, and so it's being played like a robot would. Now, one way to do that, let's say we have all these snares, is you highlight them, functions, MIDI transform, random velocity, and then we get this screen right here. You can ignore most of it, but the most important part is that here, let's say we randomize between 124 and 100. 
This would mean that all the hits will be randomized. Every single hit will be some number between 124 as the upper limit and 113 as the bottom limit. If we then click on operate only, all those highlighted tracks you see, not all of them are blood red. They're a bit orange, a bit brown. And so this one is 115 velocity. The next one is 121. The next one is 118 and so they're all a bit different. So you would have to do that for all your hits. However, keep in mind that no drummer actually hits completely randomly at all times either. If you think about it, a drummer has certain moves that he will always do because he's a human. So two snares after each other, one will always be heavier than the other unless he's really trying to not do that. So if you get really, really advanced, you will be able to go, okay, so I do this snare and then this tom, but since he just played the snare, he moves to that tom and so one will be higher or harder than the other. And so then you're getting really advanced. However, if you don't want to be thinking about it right now and you just want to be creating some drum tracks, but you don't want it to sound super machine gun either, we actually made this humanize button right here. So rather than having to randomize all velocities randomly, or going over every single note and going, oh, this kick, I want it to be 118. Oh, this snare, I want it to be 123 and so forth. You have this simple button that you just turn up. And what it will do is it will randomize the velocities for you. If you turn it all the way up, it will get maybe a little bit too random for what you're trying to do. So usually I try to use it between three and five. That's usually the sweet spot for harder metal in my opinion. But yeah, you can experiment with that, but then you don't have to get into that annoying mathematical zone when you're actually trying to be creative. So that's what we have right now. We just have a really, really basic drum pattern. And now it's up to you to actually get super creative and start creating your own drum tracks. One thing I really like to do is going to something like songster.com and just checking out drum tracks of real drummers. And they will have tabs that show you which kicks are being used when like, oh, this guy always plays the snare on this beat or here he plays those cymbals. And that way you can actually check out your favorite drum tracks from your favorite drummers and learn how they play and then program that way on your own tracks. Now, of course, you don't have to totally steal everything. That would obviously be illegal, but you can learn a thing or two. So that was this short introduction to MIDI programming your drums. I hope you found this very interesting. If you haven't picked up Mjolnir drums yet, that link is in the description. I hope you found this informative and I will see you soon. Ciao.